And many thanks for joining me on Off the Press this morning, the program where we dissect the national dailies and make sense of it. And with me this morning in the studio to dissect and, of course, understand the issues emanating from our dailies is uh, Tubosun Akeju, reputation manager and, of course, public affairs analyst. Good morning. Good Thank morning. you. Good morning. Good to have you this morning. Uh, so there are so many stories here popping out, uh, I can see. And uh, up for review this morning is the Punch newspaper. We are beginning with the Punch newspaper. Paper. And it says on the front page, Doctor's Exodus now more alarming, says NMA. You find that on page two, 60 doctors dump Lagos hospitals every six months. This is from NMA also. 700 doctors leave Nigeria annually, says first vice president. All my mates have left Nigeria, United States-based doctor is saying so, affirming uh, what we see there on the headline. And then we see Salami Soludo panel replaces Oshibajo economic team. That's on page 26, as now displayed on your screen there. And Chad Niger headsman to benefit from federal government's uh, livestock scheme. You find that also on page 42, Rivers uh, Niger Benue's rise heightened River Niger, Benue's rise, heightens flawed alarm. You find that on page 43, also of the Punch newspaper, as displayed there. And then from the top, on the top bottom, uh, we have a picture stories there of um, the president and the envoy from South Africa. South Africa apologizes for xenophobic attacks. Envoy meets President Buhari on page 42. Now, APC reacts as tribunal upholds Makinde's election on page 12. Singer Dami Crane arraigned for threat to life. Policeman, six others die in Lagos, Oshun Rivers crashes. You find that on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper as displayed there on your screen. screen. And then five, you, uh, you UTME candidates face prosecution for falsifying scores. That's very serious. You find that on page 43. Now, Tuboson, where do we begin this morning? I think we should talk uh, first about the exodus of the doctors. Mm -hmm. um, surprise, enemy is just saying it's more alarming. Um, while I agree that uh, you know the health sector in Nigeria is facing a major problem, mm -hmm. um, the doctors, the issue with the doctors is a bit unique because they're not the only ones trying to leave Nigeria. I think that an average Nigeria at this wants moment to escape. wants so to, get, to escape, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, wants to get another passport or wants to leave the country. And it shows that people are actually losing faith mm -hmm. in the entity called Nigeria. But the doctors is worse because number one, not only do we have a shortage of supplies of doctors in Nigeria, mm -hmm. The few that we have are now leaving, leaving. the country. And they, to, to speak on the side of the doctors, because I have a couple of them as friends, is the fact that you know medical uh, practitioners are subjected to a bit of mental um, stress that a lot of people you know do not. They, a lot of them don't even talk about because mm -hmm. when you're a when you treat a patient, sometimes you can get a bit attached to the case of that patient, and so when the patient dies, it's very painful. And when the patient dies from a situation that you know by your profession that was avoidable, but yeah. you know there was a time I read something on on on, on Twitter about a, a patient that died because someone locked the room where they could have taken something to save the life of the patient, or so because sad. the person had gone home, you know, and the those doctors continue to live with that trauma. So while a lot of them are passionate about what they do, mm -hmm. they still have a bit of passion for their country, but unfortunately, the environment is not conducive. So it's not enough, you know, for NME to start to shout about the fact that they are leaving because they will continue to leave mm -hmm. until something significant is done about the health sector, until, you know, um, um, the, 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 the welfare conditions, the compensations for doctors, you know, are more compelling. You see people... Before now, professional courses in school was an assurance that when you get out of school, you get, you get a, a good job. paying job. Mm. The case is, that's not the case anymore, Sadly. you know, in Nigeria. So a lot of these people are like, I want to get out of this country to go and get somewhere. So, I, I mean, the 700 doctors, I saw the numbers I saw online yesterday, only to UK was more than 700. That's only to sad. UK was way more than 700, mm. you know, annually. And I think that we have a big problem on our hands because if the middle income earners and the professional ants are leaving our country and going to another place, then in the next five to ten years, then we're going to have a debt of um, of good ants to even work and develop and help us create a GDP, 
you know that um, that is enviable in, mm. in in a country like Nigeria. Mm. Yeah, and I, and I also think that this is good because you recall that at some point, um, you know, the uh, former minister, yes, of, uh, uh, Chris Ngige was heard saying that oh, we have so many doctors, and if they want to leave, but so it's good again. It's a good thing that yeah, this is that in the fore. Uh, so, so we know at least we've we identified it as a problem, mm. and then we take it up from from there. Mm. All right, I hope we take it up from there. <laughs> yeah. And so, what are your thoughts now? South Africa is apologizing. Uh, for the xenophobic attack. I, I'm not sure what the apology is about. Mm. Because um, in another breath, some of the officials have said that Nigeria was overreacting. And I'm, I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. You see, it, it also goes back to show um, how much value, per perceived value, the Nigerian life is. Because if you kill just one single citizen of the United States of America, you will know <laughs> that the United States of America is not overreacting. Mm. So um, while, you know, the apology is a step in the right direction about over a week after we've had this situation. Is I it think long overdue? It's long overdue. I'm not sure about the sincerity of the apology. And I still strongly believe that what is going on Again, I mean, I like to go to the root cause of issues. Mm -hmm. The problem is not only in South Africa. Um, I, I, I read um, a post on Twitter, again, um, over the weekend, and it was a bit worrying. And someone had said that, oh, um, the, he, went, or he or she went to give a presentation somewhere in, in a school in the U.S., and all the old faculty had you know, had Nigerians on it, that Nigerians seems to always move somewhere and you know, take over that space. Mm. And you think that the only problem we have is in South Africa. No, we have the same issue in places like Ghana. You know, uh, we have the same issue in Kenya. I've seen videos on mm. social media Kenya. where Kenyans were complaining about the fact that Nigerians, you know, are a bit domineering. And it goes to show that, and this is what I say jokingly with my friends, mm. you say that a lot of the things that other countries are going through now Nigerians have gone through it in the 90s. We've had our fair share of difficulty. Mm -hmm. So we've become an extra resilient people. people. So anywhere we find ourselves, you know, we go through throttle. And that's why everybody seems like, why are these people be aggressive and we all want of to them? survive. Exactly. We, we, we are just very, you know, we're very, we, we go very hard. Mm. You know, so I think what this is saying to us as a people is that there's a need for us to look inward, okay. develop the Nigerian space so well that other people don't start to see us as a threat. As a threat, because they know that these people have a secular redress. Like, if you don't want them in your country, they'll go back to their country and do well and for themselves. And they'll be just fine. Yes, and they'll they be just back. fine. I think that one of the reasons why Nigerians are being treated the way they're, you know, we're treated is because it seemed to appear like going back home is worse. Mm. So the apology from South Africa is a step in the right direction, but I think that something more definitely has to be done so that this xenophobic attack will not happen again. And so that there is, because there also seems to be a bit of a political gain for the South African politicians mm. in supporting the South African people to say that, oh, the Nigerians are taking our jobs, they are doing this. So South Africa must on its own go on a drive to reorientate their people about the, the, the importance of having foreigners and how to manage foreigners. While Nigeria back at home must also treat itself to ensure that, you know, the thing on the mind of an average Nigerian is not to get out of the country mm. to look for, you know, a greener pasture. I because mean, it I, seems like the grass is actually greener on the other side. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I tend to agree with you, you know, um, with you know, what, what you've just said. If we get our acts together as a nation, probably we we'll not be in some of the situation. I mean, one of the things that uh, an analyst said here uh, on Monday or, or last week was, this return is coming back, it actually looks like uh, from fry, fry pan to, to fire. fire, sadly, you know. And then you wonder, where's the old saying of uh, no place like home, if that's the situation. So I agree, if we put our, get our ass together, um, it would be a good place yeah, and safe uh, place. That's it. Uh, all right, so uh, any other? I, don't um, I think um, here. one last one mm -hmm. on, from the punch will be the direct remittance to Nigeria mm -hmm. rising by 137%, you know, uh, in the first seven months of 2019. While you would say that, you know, uh, if you compare um, that remittance to last year, mm -hmm. you could say because we're 
preparing for the elections last year, there might have been a bit of withdrawal from because these remittances are not just domestic, they're both the business and you know domestic. Um, but 137 is significant, percent mm -hmm. increase is significant. Um, I'm glad to see that. Uh, I think that the lesson and what is very important for us to take out of this is the fact that the Nigerian culture, the African culture as a whole, has become more attractive on the global scene. Hmm. And it's very important for us, you know, to take advantage of this wave because it will move mm -hmm. again. Um, uh, uh, the Nigerian entertainment and media space is the fastest growing in the world at the moment. And I, I, say, I, I say it all the time um, in the course of my work that um, one of the evidences which is very, very strong is the fact that Nigeria had almost five artists on the Lion King's album by mm. Beyonce. It goes to show mm -hmm. how much of our music they really like. And if you go also to talk about the Nigerian attire, you know, you see um, even people, influencers like T.D. Jakes, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people now, they wear the Nigerian attire on and on, you know, without apologies. And uh, I was speaking to a tailor who was saying that, oh, he suddenly noticed that there's been an increase in demand for his clothes from the US. Mm -hmm. And he used to have a lot of that from the UK. Well, because the UK has a lot of Nigerian community. Mm -hmm. That's why it's from the US, because when you see influencers and big people like this, or Nigerians who now proudly wear this thing, has become years. globally acceptable. My point here is that if we do not take advantage of this, the global companies are going to sit wherever they are and mute this to the very last. And before you know, we are holding the shoulder end of the stick again. Mm. So um, these remittances, we should be happy about it, but we should ensure that we you know, take advantage of it and as maximize. quickly as possible so that we can maximize it for economic mm. Thank you very much. Great thoughts there. Yeah. And so we we'll move now very quickly, uh, in the interest of time, to the Guardian newspaper. And it says, South Africa uh, begs an exit of Nigerians hurts economy. Okay, and we'll discuss compensation on August, uh, October the 3rd, rather, says Ramaphosa. I believe that's when our own president will join him. Uh, Obasanjo wants xenophobic attacks reported to AU and 390 more Nigerians to return to Lagos today. Um, you'll find that on the front page as displayed there on your screens of the Guardian newspaper. And uh, to the left, it says labor and FG meeting on minimum wage Im implementation deadlock again. So there's no agreement yet. Uh, they say they're going to brief uh, the public of what will be their next line of action. The minister blames stagnant growth on unimplemented NESG reports. That's on page 7 of uh, the Guardian newspaper. And telecoms operators rectify 6.7 million of 9.2 million irregular mobile lines. That news is on page 7. And Igbo take alleged marginalization by federal government to the United Nations. You find that also on page eight, an EU moves to give goods from Nigeria and others visibility, uh, just like what you're <laughs> what saying. Exactly. Uh, so thankfully they are thinking ahead, <laughs> so to speak. So you find that also on page nine. So which shall we begin with? Um, I'll talk well, um, a bit about the minimum wage Okay, um, there's no agreement issue. yet. Uh, I have a bit of a different opinion to the is issue of minimum wage. Why so? Um, I, I think that we we have, I mean, there's no cry when the head is off, mm -hmm. but it's important to also properly understand our problem to be able to give proper solutions to it. Okay. Um, I think that at the stage the country is, what the union leaders should be fighting for are the social amenities that will make life easier for the average Nigerian and not the minimum wage. Mm. Um, if Because the same, by increasing the take home of the average worker in mm. the Nigerian or, you know, workspace, what you've increased is the spending power, um, which is not for, how many people, you know, what's, what's the ratio of the people employed by Nigerian governments at both states local government and state level compared to those who are not employed by government. Mm -hmm. But one thing that we can all share, we can all share, you know, a 21st century transport infrastructure. We can all share a 21st century health 
you know, facility around. Maybe you work for government or you don't work for government. That's correct. We can all enjoy power. And, but I understand that the labor has gone this route because people like the government has refused mm -hmm. to reduce its over um, um, um size. You know, the legislators have refused to reduce how much they earn. But I don't think that two wrongs makes it right. That's correct. I think that one of the reasons the government have given for increasing VAT is because of this minimum wage. Hmm. So what we're doing is like we're just going down the wrong road. It will lead us nowhere. Hmm. So, you know, going in the right direction is better than speed. Do you understand? Yeah. Why speed is important, but if, if, you, if you're moving at a fast you know, speed in the wrong direction, you're not going to get to the desired destination. Um, and right now, I think what the labor leaders should be fighting for are those social amenities. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they're, they're, they're not so big. We need good roads. We, we all don't have to put our cars on the road. We need good hospitals. We don't have to pay ham and a leg you know, to be in good hospitals. And I, that is my opinion about the minimum wage mm -hmm. thing. I'm not sure this country can afford that new minimum wage. I think that we are further, you know, going in, we're going to further go into major, major problems unless we find a way to significantly increase our revenue mm -hmm. and will significantly increase infrastructure development or else that increase in minimum wage in the next five years we're going to be asking for anything more again. tangible it won't you know, amount to i was just tangible. going to say again you know because in the news they said they are going to inform the public what's the next line of action maybe let me just say it could be again another industrial strike but does all of this strike again does it even give answers does I'm it amount to anything I'm quite sure that if mm. they should go on any strike right now it would be less effective and they will lose their bargaining like, power mm -hmm. i mean it's going to make the government you know less uh, popular, but everybody, we are becoming more informed about this issue. So it's going to be their word against against, against mm -hmm. us if they are able to force the legislatures to reduce um, uh, their, their their pays and benefit. If they are able to get government to reduce, you know, the, their size. Maybe you know that that Just would be a game. Maybe that would be a game. I think that those are the things that we should fight, not mm -hmm. you know um, this direction. I I'm not. I'm, I don't support that school of thought. All right. Uh, very quickly, then please grab a copy of the Guardian newspaper and get all of this. And then as we move now to Vanguard, up next for review is the Vanguard newspaper, and it says here, yeah, Ramaphosa apologizes. That's the big story there, and we see the picture story of South African envoy at Aso Aso Rock Villa, and uh, it says. Um, Top there, Soludo, Rewani, and Doin Salami make new economic advisory council. Please find that on page nine of the Vanguard newspaper. And Mugabe was the most erudite statesman I had the honor of listening to, barring former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Alfred Kissinger says that. Uh, I don't get enough credits for my work. Uh, singer Adekunle Gold rather says so. Please find on page 11. They're displayed on your screen uh, why he says so. In fractions, uh, SEC asks investors to utilize whistleblowing policy. Oh, what happened to that whistleblowing policy again? Uh, that's on page 19. Please grab a copy. And um, a papa gridlock. So Molu reps seek approval for Badagri and Lekki seaports. Find that interesting news on page 10 as displayed on your screen there. And over 100 uh, local government areas in 33 states affected by flood. Uh, NIHSA says so on page 35, and oil prices looking up as Yemen, thre Yemen threatens another attack on Saudi Arabia. That's on page 9 and um, of this uh, newspaper, the Vanguard newspaper. Tribunal opposes marking this election. Uh, Southwest PDP tells Adelabo to accept verdict. And Masari kidnapping banditry can be, con can, can be cancerous, consume Nigeria. If Please find out what the if is on page seven of the Vanguard newspaper. Your thoughts on which one? Um, the um, Economic Advisory Council. Mm -hmm. um, you know, very, very um, interesting uh, team Turn out there. that um, the, the, the president signed up or announced um, yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, one of Nigeria's finest minds is put them together but it's not enough to put that team together okay um i think that the the gov government as a whole not the president alone the government and you know as a whole the presidency as a whole must be ready to listen to the attitude from 
you know this team um and i like the fact that you know there seem to be even people that have spoken in different ways on mm -hmm. those teams that have asked oh float the naira or oh, the float you know um, and i think that that will bring together a lot of um uh, fine, refined ideas when they come together. Mm -hmm. What I, what's a bit of a concern for me is how they went about, you know, the announcement of this economic advisory council and the fact that it will be replacing the economic management team, you know, headed by the uh, vice president. president. There seemed to be something a bit fishy there mm -hmm. because just yesterday, the vice president still had a meeting with the economic management team. And then the release went ahead to specifically say that, you know, this adv economic advisory council mm -hmm. will be reporting directly to, to the, the president. president. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just read, like, I, like, you know, the good book says, the house divided against itself cannot stand. Mm -hmm. I just really, really hope that we're not starting to experience some frictions in that place because at the end of the day, this economic advisory council will not work in isolation, knowing that That's right. the economic management team under the vice uh, president, however, I'd seem a bit more ceremonial than uh, technical. Mm -hmm. And they will still, however, this economic advisory council made up of majorly people from the private sector will still have to work with those in the public sector, ministers and the directors mm. for proper implementation of anything that they're, you know, advising and the sure. president to do. Mm. So, but at the end of the day, the ultimate goal here is to ensure that the Nigerian economy is growing at a rate that needs or has the potential to grow because we're definitely growing, you know, below our potential. As you will see in, you know, our conversation with uh, Bill Gates and journalists, mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, recently talking about, you know, the amount of money Nigeria is able to raise. But uh, like I said, it's a step in the right direction. And mm -hmm. Get the best, the team get your best mind and then listen to your listen best mind. And implement also. what and you guys want to say. Okay, that's a great one there. And so we move to the last paper here for review. It's the Nation uh, newspaper. It says, my wish for Nigeria, Bill Gates, uh, find out what that's about on page two, as displayed there on your screen, SDG's uh, reports inside. Wadume military police tango over trial reports creates row. That's on page seven. And workers for strike over minimum wage. Well, negotiation deadlocks. We talked about it already. That's on page 40. Please grab a copy of the nation newspaper and know what that's about. And inside tribunal, or your APC governorship candidate's petition lacks merit. That's on page 41 of the nation newspaper. And RMA FC asks governors for new revenue sharing plan. Uh, state insists on 42% agency to expand source of income. Uh, Buhari accepts South Africa's apology for xenophobic attacks. That's on page 7. Um, Ramaphosa begs. Compensation likely, uh, that's not, we're not sure, so it's likely to happen, may, may not, uh, if I understand. And then Obasanjo seeks AU action. All right, Cuba to produce anti-diabetic drugs in Nigeria. That's on page seven uh, of the nation newspaper. Please, IPOB using blackmail. Please uh, grab a copy on page eight and see what that's about. Now, our president has accepted the apology to Muslim. Well, well, well. Okay. oh well. <laughs> So that was quite easy. But it sounds. If, it sounds. I like mean, I think there should have been a precondition to accepting the apology. There has to be. I believe some. You know, perception they say is reality. Mm -hmm. And I expected a bit of more posturing from our president beyond what I'm seeing. I don't like the fact that it's the president that is going to South Africa in October. In October, you know, I. I, I mean, <laughs> come on. At the end of the day, you know, the economy of South Africa might be stronger than Nigeria, but, but Nigeria remains, you know, a force to reckon with in yeah. Africa. And mm -hmm. I don't think that we should, you know, in any way, you know, even if we're weak, there's not time to show any Expose side of our weakness. Our weakness. So. And, you know, so that also has offered uh, the opportunity, so to speak, because in the earlier paper we saw of Ramaphosa saying, well, we'll talk about compensation when you come in October. I think October. that should have been a precondition. You know, there should have been an offer, who do we compensate, how do we move around? I don't Let's think even see tangible actions and plans exactly. towards it. I think, I mean, what South Africa has done so far just looks like a crisis comes effect, more like damage control, not much, you know, hmm, <laughs> to rectify the main underlying problems mm. that we have here. 
That's quite unfortunate. Uh, we hope to see a better result. And please grab a copy of the Nation newspaper and at the back and find out what the columnist is talking about. Musings on the PEC's verdict uh, and hardball one term at a time. So uh, please grab copies of this paper uh, earlier discussed, talked about on uh, the newspaper review this morning. And that's where we'll get, be a wrap. Uh, thank you very much to Boston for being with me here. Thank you for having me. Uh, and so we're wrapping on this note here on Off the Press. We do this again tomorrow at the same time, 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa and off the press where we'll talk about national dailies and the headlines and make sense of it. I am Amaka Okoye. See you tomorrow.